We're back at it, y'all. We're back. Look, look, I figured it out. I, look, we figured it out. I just needed to come back live and explain. Here's how this works, y'all. Tyrone, what up, baby? Here's Alito, what up? Thanks for liking the stream. Here's how this works, right? Right now, we have these couple things inside of this scene. It's bothering the crap out of me. We don't really need this one. This one's not there. I was looking at the wrong spot. So, the, what we figured out first time was that when we went to filters, there's different ways you can move things around up on the screen within the same scene if you want to, right? You could do things and use hotkeys if you want to, but the problem was we didn't know how to go from one scene to another and keep things moving. That's what I wanted to do originally. Uh, so here's the, here's the secret. It's in scene transitions. And you can do a scene transition override if you really want to on this side. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a scene transition on this side. This is the missing factor. We're going to add a move scene transition. And I'm going to call this scene. I'm going to call this Lido, right? The move is Lido. What this is now. Normally, okay, so real quick, before I turn this on, what, what, should we, what, what you're familiar with is this. When we go from one scene to another... Oh, that's not even loaded. If you go to one scene to another, like you can fade in and out, right? So the fade would be like this. It fades from one thing to another, right? You see that fade happening, right? That's what these scene transitions do. But the thing that we want to do now is we want to manipulate the move on the items that are there. So if we go down and we go to move Lido and we look at the settings, here's where all the beautiful stuff is, right? Here's where all the beautiful stuff is. If the same, if it matches the same sources in it, it'll move it around for you. So I'm gonna leave these all, all as default and they're all like basic transitions, right? So I'm gonna leave them all as default. But now, when I go from Jennifer to then Mason, then, then to Jason, you see that the same sources are moving around, right? Here's the thing, what I didn't understand. So if I'm gonna shut off move transition real quick because I just wanna show you what happens. So if I go to from Jennifer. Oh, that's right. So this scene trend, this gets th this thing over here will even take things that are not inside the scene. So if a scene has the same item, it'll do this. If a scene has something that is appearing for the first time, it'll do this. If it has something that is disappearing, then it'll do this. So what that means is like, if we look at Mason, right? Mason has the, the source Jennifer and also image background. If we look at Jennifer, it just has these two images in it, but it counts that because it's part of the same thing. So the new thing is the background and what it'll do is recognize that's the new item and move it in and out. Here's where the override comes into play. Here's where the override comes into play. I didn't realize this. The override comes into play because right now, if you look at it, right? It zooms out the background. And it zooms in the background from the left, and then it zooms out to the right. That's the setting here. If I want to change the setting for particular scenes, I then go to the override, and then I say, I want, I don't want it to zoom. I want it to zoom, no, I don't want it to zoom in and out. So disappearing items, zoom, no. Appearing items, no. And I want it to only apply to the image, right? Now, I want it to come from the left. I want it to come from the top, right? And then I want it to come in out. I want it to go out to the bottom. So I'm gonna close, right? Now, if I go to Jennifer, dang it. Wait, did I turn it on? I don't think I turned it on. Filters, I didn't turn it on. So now the override is on, right? Now, when I do this, it'll go down and come from the top. So you can trigger the motion between things, between different scenes, fairly simply by using the move transition and then using the override to force certain things that happen within the same place. So you, can, you, you don't have to have the same settings all over the place. You can manipulate them on the fly for the item that is there. And here's the cool thing. All right, so, all right, so let's say we want to do something more aggressive. We go to filters. Now, if we match match items, match source, we can match a source. We can do all of those particular things if we find a source that we want to match from another place. I like seeing behind the scenes of Ashley. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate that too. I appreciate you hanging out and show uh, and, and chilling. So let's say if we want to choose even a different effect, right? The move transition, I want this to just go 
I want this to be circular. I want this to now zoom. Yes, it's gonna go zoom still from the bottom. Wait, let's do um, top left, right? Top left, zoom in from the bottom for things that are disappearing. And things that are appearing are gonna go zoom, yes. Uh, top, bottom, right. Right? And we want this to be circular too. All right, we're gonna close. Now, it zooms in exactly the way that we override it. The beautiful thing about this is this nested scene, and it, it, I love the fact the logic is there. This nested scene also understands what needs to happen. So the fact that these are still named essentially the same in the function, I can do, I can add a bunch of these. Oh, what if I add a bunch of them? So if I do this and I add a bunch of Jennifers, I add two Jennifers, right? I add Jennifer here, I'm gonna add a small one on this side, and then I'm gonna add one more Jennifer as a nested scene all the way. I'm gonna add this one large, right? Even, maybe even larger than the frame of the, of, of the scene itself. There's that, right? Now if I go, and I go to Jason, all the sources move because those, and the two things that are different here is that, oh, that is cool. Oh, that's a deep dope effect. So all the sources will combine into one. Oh, that's super dope. That is super dope. Okay, so if we change then the properties and I say match items, and I don't say cubic. I do something like a bounce, right? And then I say uh, transition. I want it to fade. No, I don't want it to fade. We'll do a bounce. What happens when you bounce it, right? If you go to bounce, bam, right? I don't like that very much. So let's change that again. And let's do it like a, let's do a back. I like the back. So we're going to go like this. They float out. And then, bam. Oh, that's dope. Look, that's so cool. This has been Scrongwire, the re Redux. Once I figured out how to use the advanced properties of the move transition override. That is so freaking powerful. Oh, that's powerful. That is so cool. Okay. And then I can match a source in any other freaking scene. On. That's so dope. Super powerful, y'all. Um, this has been uh, Scrum Wire Part 2, the short version. I had to figure it out, and now I had to let y'all know. So that's how you use the move transition. 